Good morning and welcome to Community Presbyterian Church. Thank you for being part of this service and this community of faith. It was a difficult week in many ways, but as Reverend Leanne said last week, we are the people who dream and who persevere. In her book, Jesus Today, Sarah Young writes from the perspective of Christ speaking directly to us now. In this case, her writing and meditations on the scriptures are uh, based on verses from Psalms, Romans, 1 Timothy, and Hebrews, and I can't think of more appropriate words of welcome and invitation than these. Be of good courage, and I will strengthen your heart. I want you to face adversity with confidence and firm determination, because I am with you, and the Holy Spirit lives in you. You have everything you need to be bold. Cowardliness is not of my kingdom. When you're feeling overwhelmed by your circumstances, remember who you are, a child of the eternal King. Invite me into the very circumstances that are intimidating you and let the light of my powerful presence strengthen you. When you choose to live courageously, I am pleased and I respond by strengthening your heart, thus increasing your valor. Expect to encounter hardships as you journey toward heaven because you live in a very broken world. This is why bravery is desperately needed among my followers. You also need hope. My promise to strengthen your heart is for those who hope in me. Courage and hope are closely connected in my kingdom. So I urge you, hold on to your courage and to your hope. They are more precious than gold. Would you pray with me? Dear God, we invite you into our circumstance to fill us with courage, with hope, and with perseverance. We look up and we see you in the vastness of space, the sky, and the beauty of the stars. But help us also, and most especially, to look within and to see and feel your limitless love and power in the spaces of ourselves. Amen. Good morning, Sunday School students. We just celebrated Jesus' birth and then the coming of the wise men some time later, but today we're moving ahead to Jesus' baptism. It's interesting to go right from Jesus' birth, where he came into the world as a baby like you and me. He had to learn how to walk and talk and how to live in the world and understand all the things people went through in life. Then we move into his baptism. He was baptized as a grown man. He waded through the muck and the mud of the River Jordan, just like other people in that region did, and he was washed and baptized by his cousin John. He said yes to God's invitation and was an example to others. Here again, he's lived his life as an example for all people, and he lived with us as one of us to understand us and to show us a better way to live. As John the Baptist said, and as Jesus proved, Baptism isn't just about getting the mud washed off on the outside. It's about changing on the inside. Many of us have been baptized and we were probably baptized as babies. And if we were, our families were saying yes to God. This child is your child, God, and we want that life for them. If you were baptized as a child, like I was, you don't remember anything about that day. But our families remember they remember that day, and there might even be pictures of that day, pictures of us with our families, maybe with the minister. We might be crying because the minister put water on our heads and we didn't like that much, but our families were there. They were proud. They were all smiles and happy tears. At Jesus' baptism, we're told in scripture that God was with Jesus on that day. His presence was seen and felt, and his voice was heard saying, this is my son, and I'm so proud of him. Please pray with me. God, you've said yes to us, and you've adopted us as your own. Help us to say yes to you, to a better way of life for the rest of our life. Amen. I was there to hear your burning cry I'll be there when you are old 
I rejoice the day you were baptized to see your life unfold. I was there when you were but a child with a faith to suit you well. In a blaze of light you wandered off to find where demons dwell. When you heard the wonder of the word, I was there to cheer you on. You were raised to praise the living Lord, to whom you now belong. If you find some wonder, share your time, and you join your hearts as one. I'll be there to make your verses rhyme from dusk till rising sun. In the middle ages of your life, not too old, no longer young, I'll be there to guide you through the night, complete what I've begun. When the evening gently closes in, and you shut your weary eyes, I'll be there as I have always been, with just one more surprise. I was there to hear your burning cry, I'll be there when you are old. I rejoice the day you were baptized, to see your life unfold. Please join me in the prayer of confession. God of all glory, you look from heaven and you see us as we are, not worthy to kneel at your feet, not ready to welcome your way. Forgive us, gracious God. In Christ, stoop down to save us. Loosen the ties that bind us to sin and set us free to love and serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. Genesis 1, 1 through 5, New International Version. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Good morning, friends. Join me now as we unite our hearts and minds in the prayer for illumination. Send down your Holy Spirit, O God, tear open the veil of heaven, and speak to us as beloved children, so that we may hear and believe the good news of your word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, do you remember that moment in The Wizard of Oz when Toto pulls back the curtain on the wizard and Dorothy and her friends discover who he really is? We've all seen that movie. We all remember the great buildup, the powerful Wizard of Oz, the great and magical Wizard of Oz. And then Toto runs down, pulls back that curtain, and they see a man behind that curtain with buttons and levers. And they realize who he really is. The reveal, or the big reveal, is a plot device in narrative structure. And it is the exposure to the reader or audience of something previously unseen that provides a critical insight. The reveal may, may tell us something about the character and who that character is. And with that new knowledge, it changes for us, the watchers or the readers. It changes the whole story with this revelation of what is true about that character. 
You may remember a couple of famous ones. Saruman in The Lord of the Rings, in The Two Towers, it was revealed that, in fact, he was in alliance with Sauron. And it makes it appear as if the quest to return the ring is completely doomed and that Gandalf is out of the picture. But, in fact, good prevails in the end. The most famous, perhaps, is Darth Vader saying to Luke, No, I am your father. And that blows open our idea of what is going on here and sets the stage for, for the final ending at the return of the Jedi. And for romantic comedy fans, learning the identity of NY-152 in You've Got Mail, that changes for us our perception of the relationship between Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan, shop girl in NY-152, and as they discover each other online and then in person. That bit of knowledge that changes everything, something we see that as witnesses to an event changes how we perceive that event. The Gospel of Mark is known for its secrets. The messianic secret is, is a big part of understanding Mark. Mar Jesus often in the Gospel of Mark is telling people, don't tell anybody he's done something miraculous. And the disciples are trying to figure out what it is, trying to put it all together. And to add to their confusion, he keeps saying to them, don't tell anybody who I am. But the Gospel begins in Mark, not with the baby in the manger and not with the beginning of time as in John or with the genealogy of Jesus as in Matthew, but it begins right with John the Baptist. And we, we read that text in, in Advent. We're going to read part of that text again because this text contains a teaser, if you will, and we will discover what we, what, who Jesus is right at the outside. And we may learn the identity of Jesus, but what does it really tell us about him? And what does that really tell us about what the Son of God means for us and our lives and the living out of our faith. Something is revealed that beckons us to follow along with the story, to find out more about what it means. So here now, the first chapter of Mark, this is verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one is, who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. We ended there in Advent, but we continue on now in this season of Epiphany. The baptism of Jesus. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved with you, I am well pleased. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John is baptizing in the Jordan, a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. He's proclaiming the way of the Lord. And then the Lord comes. Jesus comes to be baptized by John. And as he comes up out of the water, he sees the heavens torn apart. And the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. And he hears the voice, you are my son. This is the reveal, my friends. This is when we see something that tells us something important about who Jesus is. We don't have much of an introduction to him prior to this text in Mark. Just, just the notice that one was coming who was greater than John. We know that. Well, now he's arrived. And that one has been revealed to be God's son, his beloved son. We also learn that the separation between heaven and earth has been breached. The heavens are torn. What a dramatic word that Jesus looked up and saw the heavens torn. I can't even imagine in my own mind what that could possibly have looked like. 
perhaps some sort of a spiritual insight to realize that the breach between heaven and earth, between God and Jesus, was now made wide open. And that now there was direct communion between God and Jesus. And then God's Spirit descended on Jesus. What a powerful scene. And that in and through Jesus, we can now know God. Jesus' identity as God's beloved Son is made known to us. But what does this revelation, what does learning this bit of information about Jesus, what does it mean for us? We could just stay here and say, yay, Jesus is God's Son. But does that have any further meaning for us? It certainly has much further meaning for Jesus. Is this the end of the revelation, or is this just the beginning? And we are beckoned to follow along in the story and find out more, more about what it means that Jesus is God's son, more about what it means that the breach, the separation has been breached, and that Jesus, in Jesus, we see God, and we can know God. We learn more about what this means for us for our journey of faith. Really, this is much more of a teaser than it is because there is so much more for us to learn. This Sunday is Baptism of Our Lord Sunday. We have our font front and center. And if you were here, I would lift water and, and ask you to touch the water on the way out of the worship service that we might remember that we are baptized. The, Jesus' baptism, this moment, is the beginning of his ministry. And like he is baptized and we remember, we are witnesses to his baptism, we remember that we are baptized as well. It's an important step in the life of faith. But it is just that, a step on a journey. It was a step for Jesus as well. But it is the journey that lies ahead that is essential for Jesus and for us. Since Advent, I've been captivated by the idea of revelation, of what is being revealed in this time in which we find ourselves. And I gained this new understanding of this word revelation from the word apocalyptic, which has been thrown about this year. And this word apocalypse meaning revelation or a revealing of something not previously known. Before it has been understood as a frightening word, a metaphor for a disaster when something is apocalyptic. And last year, 2020, certainly felt disastrous. So what was being revealed in that time? Rather, the meaning of apocalypse is almost the complete opposite of disaster. It's an unveiling. It's a pulling back of the veil. It is seeing something that we haven't seen before. We see Jesus as God's son, but we see that breach, that separation breached, that we might know God. Richard Rohr describes it in this way. The current order is revealed as passing and falling apart. So you're shocked into recognition of the possibility of a different order. Order was what was before Jesus' baptism. This baptism brings about disorder, and the remainder of Mark is the working out of that disorder, which leads us ultimately to crucifixion and to resurrection and to a completely new order of things. Order, disorder, reorder are the cycles of our journey of life. Sometimes they happen in small scale in each of our lives individually. Small episodes of order, disorder, reorder, things how we knew them. Things are suddenly upset by a trauma or a tragedy. And then there is a new order. I think disorder can even come at times from something good. But then a new order comes. But I think on a much larger scale, that all of life, all of creation is order, disorder, and reorder. And something new is always being revealed. 
a veil is being pulled back, and we are able to see what God is doing. Jesus, as the Son of God, shakes up the order of his time. Jesus, as the Son of God, continues to shake up the order of things. The breach of the separation between heaven and earth is upended, torn apart, so that we have access to God, so that we can see in the life of Christ what it means to live as faithful disciples. And a completely new order is revealed as community continues to live out the truth of the good news of the gospel. The understanding of Revelation as a new and different order provides me hope in these times in which we find ourselves. In this new reality, as a result of this last year when things were upended and we could no longer gather in person for worship, I began recording these sermons early in the week as it fits the schedule of me and Norm who gather, we gather here usually on Wednesday mornings. And I record these sermons in advance of Sunday, and you can watch them on Sundays. I repeat this sermon live out on the lawn on Sunday morning. But when I repeat it live, I may be able to react with what has happened in the world between Wednesday and Sunday. But unfortunately, when you see this on Sunday, sometimes I can't react to what has happened in the world. Well, this week, due to a scheduling need, Norm and I are meeting on Thursday. And you know what happened yesterday on Wednesday, January 6th. It was a day of disorder like I have never seen before. And I'm sure you haven't seen anything like that either. Yesterday, had we recorded the sermon, I would not have seen on TV and read in the news <clears throat> the, offense, the events that unfolded in our nation's capital. Yesterday, we saw one of the most shocking displays of disorder that any of us have witnessed in the United States of America. And the thoughts of that filled my mind as I was preparing this sermon to deliver to you this Thursday morning. We couldn't believe what was happening. It was surreal. That large-scale disorder that was coming to pass at the Capitol. And in order to find hope in the wake of what took place yesterday, I have to cling to the belief that God is at work transforming disorder into a new order, reordering events so that something new is happening. Yesterday, what we saw was shocking and appalling for all of us that these events could take place. And yet, God has to be at work. A sovereign God who has always been at the work of order, disorder, and reorder will be at work in what transpired in our nation yesterday and in the larger life of our democracy as we move forward to take what happened, learn from it, transform it into a new order one of my favorite Alexander Hamilton quotes, and I, I don't come to this one through the, through, the musical Alexam, uh, through the musical Hamilton, is this. The sacred rights of humankind are not to be rummaged for among old parchments or musty records. They are written, as with a sunbeam, in the whole volume of human nature by the hand of the divinity itself and can never be erased or obscured by mortal powers. What happened yesterday will not be the final revelation of who we are. We are all children of God. Each one of us, given what we are as human beings, our divine rights as human beings, by the hand of God, our creator. So what happened yesterday is not the best of who we are, and it is not the last word of who we are. But it is through that experience that we as children of God will come to work alongside God to create a new order of things. Baptism is not the final reveal, not for Jesus and not for us. It is a stop on this journey of transformation that we are on. Teresa Cho says this, baptism is a reminder that where we are going is more important 
than where we have been. Where are we going, my friends, as we follow Christ? These words were especially helpful to me yesterday, again from Richard Rohr. No matter what is going on around us, it is important to remember that God keeps transforming creation into something both good and new. Instead of hurtling us towards catastrophe, God always wants to bring us somewhere even better. God keeps creating things from the inside out so that they are forever yearning, developing, growing, changing for good. That might be hard to see sometimes in the moment, but it's nevertheless true, says Richard Rohr. We are invited to step into the breach, my friends, and journey with the disciples as we find out more and more what it means that Jesus is the Son of God through whom the separation between heaven and earth is torn away. The journey before us is what is important. It's more important than where we have been. Where we go after what happened yesterday will define us. That will show us who we are and who God is in our midst as we seek God and the new order that God is bringing about. Allow me, if you will, to skip ahead a little bit in Mark's gospel. There's only one other place where the word torn is used in Mark's gospel. It's a glimpse of a larger unveiling. It is at the very end of the gospel. It is after Jesus' crucifixion, the temple curtain is torn from top to bottom. And a Roman centurion who is standing at the foot of the cross says, truly, this man was the son of God. That man knew the identity of Jesus. And that temple being torn shows us that that breach, that breach of the separation between us and God was not just for Jesus and it was not just for that time. It symbolizes that we step into that breach and we know God always, that God's revelation is continuing to unfold in our lives and that God is bringing order, a new order out of disorder. And we journey along with the disciples as we seek to be a part of the work to God, as we embrace who we are as God's children, given certain rights by our creator, that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is who we are created to be, not just us, but all people in all of time and in all of creation. My friends, we are invited to step into that breach, to, to move into that new place of opening between us and God and follow where God is leading us as we work alongside to bring about that new creation. Amen. Mindful of the many needs around us, we turn to God for help and healing, saying to you, O God, we cry, be gracious to us. Will you join me now in a time of prayer? Ever seeking your glory, God, we pray for the church. Remember the people that you have claimed by water and the Holy Spirit. Make us a sign of your life-giving grace. To you, O God, we cry, be gracious to us. Ever seeking your glory, we pray for the world. Rule with compassion over the chaos. Strengthen leaders to do what is right and bless all people with peace. To you, O God, we cry, be gracious to us. Ever seeking your glory, we pray for this community. Send your Holy Spirit among us to speak the truth in troubled times and break through the walls that divide us. To you, O God, we cry, be gracious to us. Ever seeking your glory, we pray for loved ones. Speak your saving, healing word. Bring light into our darkness, comfort to all those who suffer. To you, O oh God, we cry, be gracious to us. Gracious God, turn our mourning into dancing, change our sorrow into joy, so that we may give you thanks and praise forever through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen.
No reputation, no stately bearing, no palace bed for royalty, but a star in the heaven, a sign full of wonder, announcing the coming of the King of Kings. Rejoice, O world, your Savior has come through the love of a A throne in a manger, a cross in a cradle, the hidden revealing this glorious plan of a child who would suffer, a child who would conquer, the sin of every woman, the sin of every man. Rejoice, O world, your Savior has come through the love of a Rejoice, O world, your Savior has come through the love of a virgin's womb. Son of God, Son of Man, born that we may have life. Rejoice, O world, your Savior has come through the love of My friends, it is Baptism of the Lord Sunday, so I invite you to remember that you are baptized, that you have been cleansed in the waters of baptism the same as Jesus Christ. But as, the same, as it was the same for Christ, it is the same for you. It is a step on a journey, and where we are going is as important as where we have been. So I invite you to step into this identity to live into this new understanding of our relationship with God revealed to us in Jesus Christ and be a part of the work of new order that God is doing in the world. And receive this benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship and communion of God's own spirit be with you this day and every day. Amen. Go in peace, my friends.